going on, everybody? Sneezemus Prime back with another episode of Cooking with Sneezemus. Yes. Yes, first one went over really well, and I appreciate everybody that liked it. I appreciate all the feedback. And we are definitely going to be working on improving the camera angles and the shots and all that stuff from there. And I'm definitely taking all your feedback into account. But today, I got to make Sunday dinner for the fam. So, uh, I got like $13 in my pocket. So, what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to make big ziti. <laughs> nice, cheap, super filling, super excellent. And, uh, yeah, I have a killer recipe for it, so I'm going to make it. Uh, it's going to be vegetarian. We're not putting any meat in it this time, but it is something that you could put some sausage in or some beef in and make it really good. So, you know, it's kind of open-ended, but I'm going to show you the basics and then anything else you want to add on, you feel free. All right, but first things first, we got to go to the grocery store. All right, here we are with all these super awesome loaves of bread here. It's about $2.99, but it's kind of worth it if you ask me. And we want to get ourselves a nice, fresh, and crusty piece of bread here that we can cut up and make little things. Now, I don't like seeded bread, but a lot of people do. So, I'm going to go here. Oh, yeah, that's a good one right there. Yes. All right. So, these guys are pretty awesome bakeries from around these parts, so they're awesome. And we don't need any of this cheese just yet, but we are going to need some, so we're going to make our way over that way. All right, guys, so the next thing that we got to grab is some spices, okay? So I'm just going to grab this Italian seasoning here. It's just basically basil and oregano and parsley and uh, a little bit of thyme in there as well, okay? Now, this is just kind of like a catch-all of dried herbs. Now, if you had the money to do it, which we do not, but if you had the money to do it, you can go ahead and uh, really enjoy the process of cutting up all of the herbs and making your own seasoning for the sauce but basically what we're going to be doing is doctoring up some jar sauce okay and i'm going to show you how to do that make some jar sauce taste really good all right all right so we are almost done here with uh, the shots that we got to do because half the stuff i already have at home so you know it's a good thing to have some stuff left over and make sure you buy extra stuff when you go grocery shopping every week because you know i can make this dish with you know, little money off the top of my head, so it's pretty nice. Um, so what we're looking at right now is we have the ricotta cheese at home, we have mozzarella cheese at home, we have the pasta and pasta sauce. So we just had to buy just a couple things to the store, and uh, you know, when we get back, I'm going to show you how to put everything together. All right. All right. So we're back here in the kitchen, and uh, yeah, big ziti is a very, very, very simple thing to make. Uh, all we really need to do it is uh, we need some ziti pasta. Right there, like that. There. It's a uh, it's Walmart brand. Don't hate, y'all know you go to Walmart. All right, uh, we need some sauce. All right, today we're gonna use the Francisco Rinaldi uh, three cheese sauce, and then we're gonna doctor this up with some other stuff as well. And I don't know, I think we might we might need another jar of sauce. So yeah, definitely gonna need two of these there just like that awesome all right we're gonna need some ricotta cheese all right now the ricotta cheese i use the whole milk you can use part skim if you want to but i like the whole milk myself and then finally we need some mozzarella cheese and whoa hey, look at that so yeah we got a whole bunch of mozzarella we're not gonna be using all of this for the dish but we definitely are gonna think and then we need a giant bowl all right yes and uh you can use the spatula too. Ah, right, nice toss. Nice toss. All right. So, basically, all we got to do is cook the pasta and put everything together. And then, yeah, we'll be good to go. All right. So, our water is at a rapid boil, which is exactly where we want it. So, now we're just going to add a couple things right here. Just like a little pinch of salt. Not too much. All right. And just a little dash of oil. Not too much. Just a squirt. Just enough to get it in there. All right, you see all that oil working its way into the water? That's what we want. It's gonna help that pasta from not sticking together. All right, and then we add our pasta. Yes. All right, now, wooden spoon. Wooden spoon, people. All right, and you wanna make like a figure eight kind of feel in there with the pasta, all right? There we go. There we go. We're just going to let that hang for like 5-10 minutes. 
because I don't know. I'm old school. I like wooden spoons. <laughs> All right. So we're going to let this cook for about 10 minutes. And then while we're doing that, we're going to put everything else together. All right. All right, guys, so we are back, and now uh, while well, that pasta's cooking, then we want to be stirring that pasta every couple of minutes, okay? You don't want to overdo it, but we got a couple minutes, so we're going to go ahead and get our ricotta in here, and bam, just like that. There's not a whole lot we can do about that. It's just going to be nice and purdy. All right, then we want to get our big old bag of mozzarella here, and we want to, we want to get, like, I mean, we just kind of eye it up, uh, now, you don't want to over mozzarella. The ricotta is supposed to be the star. But I'd say that's probably about good there. Say it looks like about a cup and a half, maybe two cups of cheese. All right. And there we go. We go two jars of sauce, just like we talked about. And yeah, there we are. Right in there. And there we go. And the next one. Boom. And in the it goes. All right. Now we want to add our seasonings. All right. And we want to uh, make sure that we mix it together very, very, very well. All right. I left the damn seasonings over here, didn't I? Hey, Lily's here, everybody. We got our seasonings in the pot. Yeah, and she's gonna get our get her mix on. All right. <laughs> So you want to fold this in, fold it all together. You want to get it really well mixed, all right? So basically, you want to get that ricotta combined with all the sauce and all the cheese. And you want to really, really get that going, all right? And we're using a spatula for this because it's easier to get stuff off of the sides and the bottom of the bowl and all that, all right? And while she's mixing that, our pasta is looking real good. All right, we're cooking, cooking at a nice thing there. We got a couple minutes left on that. All right, so there we go. So the next thing that we're gonna have to do from here is mix everything together and then put it in a nice big pan and get it in the oven. All right. You don't have to do layers. So there we are. What's that? Don't have to do layers. Nope. No layers for Big Z, just mix it all together. All right, and uh, there we go. Yes, yes, looking good, Lou. Looking good, Lou. Looking real good. All right. So, yep, we got all this mixed up, and uh, we'll be back when we're pulling the pasta out. All right, folks, our pasta is done. So let's go ahead and turn that heat off. And we got to get ourselves our little colander drawn here. Alright, <laughs> and watch out for steam burns when you're doing this part. If you've never cooked before, trust me, this is hot, okay? You want to keep your face out of there, alright? Alright, get that out of there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run this under some cold water. Now if you have the time to be able to make an ice bath or something like that, you can feel free to do that. We're getting there with your hands and just kind of cool it off. What this is going to do is it's going to stop the pasta from cooking, so that way it's not overcooked, alright? You want to pull this a little early, not too late, all right, so that way it can finish cooking and all the sauce and everything, all right. So we're going to go ahead and take this, we're going to put it back in the pot for right now, all right. We're just going to let that hang there, okay. We're going to combine everything next. All right, so the next step, go ahead and get all that pasta in there, all right. And you want to fold it in just like we did before. Make sure it gets really well covered and everything gets put in there really good. Oh, we must have lost one there. <laughs> All right, so. I mixed that very well. Yes, she did. Yes, she did indeed. All right. So we're going to get this, pasta. get this pasta all up in there. All pasta right. Pasta down. Yep. Yep. Lost the pasta. We might lose another one in this process here. But you know what? Cooking. It's not a clean game, all right? If you make too much of a clean game, well, then you're, you're missing the point, all right? You can always clean up whatever mess you make, okay? And so our final step here for right now is to get this in a pan, all right? We got ourselves a large Pyrex here, and we're going to go ahead and get this all set up here. And then you want to do what you can to even it out, 
all right? So just kind of move everything around a little bit. There we go. Now this is the time, guys, right here, when you're doing this mixing and putting it in the bowl, that if you want to add any protein, any ground beef, sausage, chicken sausage, whatever it is that you want to do, this is the time where you want to add it because we're getting ready to put it in the oven now, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to cover this up with tin foil, and we're going to bake it in a preheated oven at 425 for about a half hour, 45 minutes, all right? And uh, I like to check it in a half hour, see what it looks like. If it's not ready yet, I'll let it go for another 10 or 15, okay? But you want to make sure you keep it covered. That is important. All right, guys, so we got our butters together ready for the garlic bread, which we're basically just going to be dipping and plating here. All right, Lily is in the house hanging out. All right, and she's going to help out with this here a little bit. All right, so with the garlic butter, you want to make sure that that garlic comes to the top. So you want to swirl that around and thing. Now, you want this to be soft. You don't want it to be too hard, all right? And chunky's okay because you got to get some garlic on the garlic bread. All right, so you just want to mix that up really good. Get that in there. Now, the other one you don't want to mix up, you don't want to play with, okay? So basically, what we're going to do, we have 12 pieces of bread here. So we're going to do six, and we're going to do six, all right? Why are we doing it in this one? Well, because my mom doesn't like garlic bread. And, you're, and you don't really like garlic either, so. Well, I do like garlic bread. Oh, do you now? All right. I well, love we'll do, garlic bread. Then we'll do nine and three. See that? See, you get that good coverage right there with that little dip. And you're just going to put that right on the pan. No, we can. Oh, yeah, we'll do nine and three. There you go. All right. Can I do, can I do the bubbles? Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. Covered there. All sorts of nice, right? Yeah, you got a little garlic on there, well, too. we can do more. Looks good. We All can right. do more butters just in case other people want butters. All right. So, so we're going to do six and six then. Fine. Yeah. All right. So here we go with our garlic butter. All right. Yes. Coming along swimmingly, it is. All right. Yo, get that dip on. Get that dip on. Yes. Yes, it's beautiful. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right. Move that around to the other side there. All right. All right. So we got our six, and then we got our other six going here. And I guess we're taking that. Come. <laughs> mm, It's like melted butter. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Let's pop it in the microwave for a little bit, and you're good to go. Oh, looks like we got 13. I'll just make another garlic. Just do a half garlic. There we go. Now the final touches. Is Here's the garlic. A little bit of cheese. Am I right? Just a sprinkle on each one. You don't have to overdo it. All right. Just a little touch of cheese. Can I sprinkle mine? Yes, you can. You get a mozzarella on here. There you go. Get that cheese on there. Just a little bit, not too much. You know what? We're going to try to keep as much cheese off of the uh, pan as possible or else it's hey, going to burn hey. the pan. Hey! Yeah, you can. We'll leave that one without cheese. <laughs> okay, well, I guess in the spirit of 100% and things, right? We'll leave one without it so that way you can see what it looks like without the cheese on it. All right? So this is going to go in the oven after we put the finishing touches on the ziti. All right. So this is going to kind of hang out for a minute. Yeah, it's a good shot of that. Hey. Look at that one with the butter. Mm. There's one with the garlic. They actually look all the same. Yep, but we know that these on this side are garlic. Yes. Right. You can make a cheese border. 
Yeah, <laughs> cheese border. All right. Feel a little wolf. Feel a little wolf. Okay. Two. Two. Oh, yes. This looks absolutely perfect, guys. Okay, so we got our sauce here. It looks like we got a little crunch on it. This is exactly what we're looking for. The last final step is to get some, bad, some cheese on top of this bad boy. All right. And we do use the mozzarella, a little bit of Parmigiano Romano. All right. And you want to try and do your best to cover the whole thing. All right. Looks like we're missing a couple spots here. Yeah, you know, I gotta say, holding the camera and doing this at the same time is proving a little difficult. But, that's okay. Like I said in the last video, right? You work with what you got, right? Okay, so we got our cheese here on top there. And our final step here, hit this with some Parmesan as well. All right. A lot of Parmesan on there. And there you have it. The Parmesan Romano mix there. Now you can use shredded Parmesan. You can use shredded Romano. You can use the fancier cheeses if you have the wallet for it. I personally do not. All right. So, yeah, this is going to go back in the oven just enough long time to melt the cheese for about 10 minutes, I'd say. And uh, the garlic bread's going to go in with it, okay? We're going to pull them both out at the same time, and we'll be ready to eat. Oh. All right, guys, so here's our finished product. A baked ZD to die for right there. Basic, simple, to the point. And we got our garlic bread. That's looking nice and toasty. Nice and toasty. And we got our salad. All right. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I think this looks amazing. And you guys can do this at home. It's very simple. To the point. You seen it? So, yeah. Let me know what you think, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, comment below other things you want to see me cook and all that. All right? Because, uh, you know, I'm always open to suggestions. And, you know, the holidays are coming up. But, uh... A Thanksgiving video is out, guys. Okay? We're sitting at 96 subscribers, so if you like this video, go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. Alright? And let's get me to that 100 mark. Alright? Till next time, guys. Me is Ms. Prime saying goodbye. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace. Alright, so uh, we're back in the kitchen now. We are ready to rock and roll. Time to start putting all this stuff together. So uh, to make baked ziti, the first thing we need is uh, naturally ziti pasta. Alright, so here we go with that.